before we get into it, I want to remind you that this Friday is the last day to get your car entered for the Throttle Dream Build 2. You guys saw us transform Josh's GC8 in just a matter of days. You could be next. So don't forget to use that link down below, guys, and get your car entered today. What's up guys, it's another day here at the Throttle Shop and we've got a special guest with us here this morning. We've got Ryan from RyeWire. He came all the way down from Orange County to go over uh, the wiring that Ricky, Will, and I have been doing. This is Ryan, you guys probably recognize him from some of our other videos. We're super grateful to have him as a partner on this project because his wiring harnesses are second to none. So if you guys have a project you're working on, check out throttle.com because we do sell his products. For, for an engine like a K series, like an F series, like a B series, Honda, this yeah. being a Honda, we have a lot of plug and play solutions for the engine. This being a Civic, we actually have a full chassis solution for it. So you just right. literally in the back, you're plugging in your taillights, you're plugging in your headlights. Sure. Your chassis harness probably was pretty much 90% there and you guys just made some minor tweaks for us because yeah. we did move the fuel pumps and stuff like that. Now we're gonna get on to what we gotta do here today because Ryan only has a few short hours with us before he heads out of town. We're gonna check out all this wiring and make sure we did a good job. Yesterday, before I left, I measured out our belt routing. This is a serpentine belt that we're going to try and test fit. So, our measurement was like 65 and three quarters or something like that. So, they had like a 64 inch belt and they had like a 70 inch belt. So, we're, I ordered both. We're going to see what is what. And if none of these fit, then we're going to have to go AWOL and find another belt set up. But, just kind of test fitting right now to see what she do. So we found our belt, it was the longer of the two, fits perfectly, everything is good with that. And then pretty much we gotta put oil in it and from a long walk standpoint, that'll be about ready to go, ready to fire up. All right, we've got some major progress. There were a few things that we had to go through and uh, either rewire, repin, or reground. But I think we did a fairly good job getting this all installed. Ryan, as you can see now, uh, has the Haltech IC7 dash actually powered up, which is exciting, I mean, Every step of the way, we're getting closer and closer to firing this car up, so. I'm just going through everything. Because there's a lot of changes that we made on the body harness, like specifically to your car, mm -hmm. away from what like the standard just ship it out would be. Whenever you change like one button on this PDM, there's so many things that happen that I have it so refined and like well programmed that like when you make one change, you gotta like change this and this and this and this, <laughs> right? So what you're so saying I'm is just, we shouldn't mess with anything at this point. <laughs> it's, it's way easier not to mess with anything because okay. it's already kind of all pre-programmed. Copy that. So, uh, but yeah, man, I'm just kind of changing things around. I'm changing what what buttons do what like you know we kind of called an audible at the very end like let's let's put a fan uh sorry a, uh, a horn a horn on the yeah. front, right like, okay well let me set up that button and we can set up the wire we can run the horn and then we can test that later yep so, yep just yep. doing stuff like that working pretty yeah cool. it's so cool it's neat to see how modular the pdm makes everything and how mm -hmm. programmable it is like yeah i'm used to using relays and relay panels for everything so like this right. is such a cool hack and um, the fact that this is now like an affordable option for people through, you know, through people like yourself putting these kits together, this is so cool. But like the plate all is like all lit up, PDMs mounted down there, Haltech Elite 1500, uh, you wide your, band, you your wide band right there, yeah. and, and a uh, fuse wire and there, distribution and block. Yeah. yeah. So it's really Easy. cool, like everything's encased in our Checkered Sports uh, heel plate for the passenger, which is cool. So it's protected, but we're able to access it and plug in and get data off to the Elite, so that's cool. Yeah, dude. Man, we're almost there. Close. Woo. 
All right, well, Ryan got us all fixed up. The car is pretty much ready for us to basically prep to start. As you can see here, we have PDM, our black box, that's down there. And that is communicating with our switch panel here. So now you can see it's pretty simple. We've got 12 channels here. We're not using all of them. We're actually only using nine of them. So essentially to start the car, we're gonna hit ignition. This will light up green. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna start up our Haltech Elite 1500 ECU. And that is going to then trigger our fuel pump to turn on. We can also manually override by hitting the button here. But this is basically just a convenience feature to be able to turn the fuel pump on and off here at the switch. Ideally, the uh, Elite 1500 will be managing the fuel pump when the ignition is turned on. At that point, you just hold down the start button and that's like turning your key to the on position, getting your starter to crank. This is essentially the starter trigger. So what's gonna happen is at that point, you've got fuel, you've got spark, um, you're gonna get obviously air through your intake and the car will start. Um, so it's a very simple two button process. Um, he also went ahead and hooked us up with lights and high beams here. So if you want the lights on, you just click that. If you want the high beams on, you click that. And you can run them one or the other as well. So if you just want to run the high beams, you can. You don't have to run the low beam with it as well and vice versa. We also had him pin this button over here for the horn. If you need to honk the horn for any reason to say hi to somebody in the paddock or um, alert somebody, we have that. And then we also have turn signals down here. So left turn signal, right turn signal. Uh, we will be removing these stocks off of the uh, factory uh, console here. If we do want to run the hazards, we just hit both of these and it's gonna uh, make all four of the flashers flash. So really cool, concise system. I really like the fact that you can just run this black box. You have to run, run a bunch of relays and stuff. They were just about ready to spin the engine over. We haven't had oil in this thing. It hasn't spun for a few years. So I had Ricky pull the spark plugs out because when you're spinning the engine and priming it, trying to get oil pressure, you want that oil to flow very easily and you want the bearings to spin very easily. If you have the spark plugs in, the engine is building compression and that is putting stress on the rod bearings. Now, normally when there's oil pressure in the engine, that's not a big deal because the oil is in place and the bearings has something to slide against when you have an engine that's sitting for a few years, you don't have that oil pressure and so you can risk spinning a bearing, spinning an engine over with compression that hasn't run for a long time. So you guys put oil in it? There's oil in it. There's oil in it. All right, so you can go ahead and spin it over. Once they have good oil pressure, then they'll put the plugs back in and we'll be jammed. Well, we also removed the uh, the fuel pump is not powered either. So we have no fuel, we have no spark, which means two out of three things are eliminated. There's no way this car can start. Yeah. So right. we just want to get no compression. Yeah. So we should out. also explain that we're trying to get, not only are we trying to oil the engine, we're trying to get oil into our oil cooler, which is added, which these normally don't have. Uh, and also the, the turbo, turbo feed line and the turbo. Yeah. So there's a lot of oil that needs to get into different places and uh, without spark and without fuel, we'll be able to push that oil there. And then when we're ready to start, we can start it up. Let's go. Very excited moment. Okay, I hit ignition okay. on the touch pad, which Ryan programmed for us. As you can see, our gauge cluster, which will be in front of the driver. All right, cranking. Ready? Yep. Let me push the clutch in to make sure. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Ready? Go ahead. Man. She's spinning. That's I got no oil pressure here. The map for the Haltech is not set up yet, so you got to use your thumbs, dude. All right, so this thing has one, two, three, four notches. What does that mean? Go to the fourth one on the top. That's a, each, that's a quart. Each one of those dots is a quart. Moto 8100 530 oil. We're gonna start with this. We're gonna dump it in the car. We're gonna start with four cores and then we're gonna obviously check the levels. Uh, we'll crank the car to make sure the entire system has oil. And then we check the level again and we'll keep going until we have the proper level before we start the vehicle. Ooh. Ooh. I like how Moto bottles got that little nozzle. You don't make a mess. Yeah, sucked up even more oil. So I'm gonna add one more quart. So we just added a quart and then ate it right up. So we're gonna add one more quart and we're gonna do the same cycle until we get the whole system filled up with oil.
While Ricky's tossing the spark plugs in, I'm gonna go ahead and toss in our Sunoco race fuel. This is 100 octane, and uh, we're gonna get to test out our fueling system and make sure that everything's tightened up and working properly. It's kind of exciting, first fuel for this car. It's a new day here at the shop and I'm working on the Freak here. Um, go ahead and get the Aero Catch hood pins installed here on the car. I already started, I got one side cut out. Uh, we gotta go ahead and drill through the other side of the hood. So we're gonna sneak up on it a little bit, make sure we don't go too aggressive. Uh, but we do have to clear out the material that's in the way of us mounting the base plate. So uh, you guys have seen me do this before. It's pretty, um, pretty simple process, just one you wanna take slow and uh, Take your time so you don't uh, make any mistakes. Gonna go ahead and uh, get my safety equipment on and cut the rest of this fiberglass out and show you guys the hood pins mounted up. All right, well, it's it's time for us to get this thing cranked up. Uh, I got Louie from DNA Garage here uh, helping us out. He's on Team Viewer, and I got Evan on our right laptop here. here plugged into the Haltec Elite 1500, which is down here in the kick panel. Got our Rywire PDM and everything turned on, and this is allowing Louie to kind of go in and set some parameters in the Haltec ECU for us before we uh, key this thing on all the way and start turning on features and, and whatnot. But we want to be able to see what's going on before we crank it. So uh, essentially Louie's helping us get that done. Right there, it's a gloss black. Oh, oh, oh. Is it expired? No, it's up to date. All right. It's ready. Should I try it? Oh, it's it like through the injectors? Yes. Yeah, so now it came. It came out of between the injector. Yeah. In that little like spacer thing. It was leaking out of the plastic fitting. Out of the plastic fitting? Out of this. The spacer. The spacer? Yes. So oh. it was leaking between these. Take three. That thing is loud. Ah, oh, yeah. How's it look, Clint? No I leaks? I think we're good, dude. I think we're good. good. All right. For real Ricky, this time? You ready? I'm looking out of my car. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. For real this time. Yeah. You got 30 right now. You got at 40. 42, that's fine. <laughs> You're trying to crank up that ECU. Is Victor here? I'm right here. What's up? <laughs> Wait, what happened? What was it? What was it? I forgot to turn the ECU on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So look, I'll show you. So I forgot. <laughs> because the fuel pump right now we don't have everything sorted exactly perfectly. When I turn the main power on, the fuel pump's automatically kicking on. So in my head, I'm thinking we have fuel and spark, but we didn't. We only have fuel. There's the fuel pump. I was forgetting to turn the ECU on, so the ECU wasn't telling the engine to start. Once the ECU kicks on, everything reset, and now. All right, well, she's a runner. Now we got a bunch of work to go back and do. We know it functions though, so that's important. Now we'll fine tune everything and get everything buttoned up so we can go give this thing a, give it a whirl. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed this process. It's been two years in the making and everybody here is super excited to see this thing on the, on the uh, racetrack. So uh, stay tuned for the livery reveal. Dennis is working on that right now in the background. And uh, yeah, we're all very excited. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, see this thing ripping. We'll see you guys later. That's it. Yeah. You want a little sneak, can we give him a sneak peek? No. No? No. Maybe black and white. Yeah, let's, it will be the sketch, the sketch. <laughs> I got that on too. We wanna see this thing start. Yeah, I dropped my lunch. Let's, let's make it start. Don't like it, what's up? Lunch is getting cold. Yeah. Pressure's on, dude. You got a whole audience, live studio yeah, audience. <laughs> Everyone's got their TikToks ready. Yeah. Dude, why is the fuel pump already on? That's what we need to fix. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cut it off. Cut it off. Ah. Cut it off. Ah. I'm just gonna eat my cold lunch now. Bye bye. Wait for them to do the do the fuel lines. Oh no. What's going on over there, Timmy? Come here, Nanog. Really? Alright, guys, throw a jet tag. Buy one, get one. <laughs> <laughs>